Dumping it out to Berkeley. Wow, he is so electric. Just making people miss everywhere. You know, I, I can't help but laugh, but it's not funny. I mean, it's like I wanted to play football ever since he we was driving our car and we came around the corner. He saw the, he saw them practicing. And he said, that's what I want to do. And that was it. And that was Pee Wee. That was eight years old. But Saquon, he's doing the same thing that he was doing at eight. Barkley from inside his own five. Barkley with a lead. Barkley with a burst. Barkley down the sideline. Saquon Barkley was the opening kick. 97 yards. Touchdown, Nick Dillon. He was always good. The skill, the vision, the power, he always had. That was God-given. He would take him to practice, and he came home, and he said, you had to see him. You had to see him. He knocked over. When like he knocked a the pack, man over? A man about like, he was, he was about like 45 years old, and Saquon, eight years old, and he hit the pad. Boom. And you know how they hold the feet. pads for the kids so they can push on it? And he was like, he knocked him off his feet. I, was, I knew it when he knocked that dude over. In the first play of, the, of the, when he played Pee Wee, the first game he scored like three touchdowns within like a quarter and a half. It was like, it, it was effortless. So right there I knew. I was like in seventh grade, eighth grade, and he was playing, he was a senior, so I think I was in seventh grade. And um, he was, they were playing at Central, and I remember him running, and he hurdled some kid. And I remember, I was like, oh yeah, he's gonna be good. He's gonna go, he's gonna go far. When he would get the ball, he was, downhill runner, he was a one cut and go type of runner, and he had very good feet, great vision, and balance. So, I would always talk with my brother, and I said, Matt, we got this young kid here that has ability, and if everything projects well and progresses well, I think he has a shot to play at the next level. And he asked me who it was, and I told him Saquon Barkley. I said, that's when I told my oldest son, Shaw, <laughs> you need to come and see this boy. And then, then Shaw came, and from there on, me and Shaw have been there every day, every, every game. And he would go outside, even when Shaw would go outside, play football with him outside in the fields. And he still does the same thing with his younger brother. He comes home, he's like, come on, let's go. You know, and they go outside and play football outside. It's been, it's been pretty cool. I mean, because like, your older brother's famous, you go to the same school as him. Same, play the same, have the same number as him. Wore the stuff that he wore, it was pretty cool. I don't think any mother want their kids playing any sport that's going to, you know, that can hurt their kid. You know, I believe there's a higher power and if something's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. But I do be on that football field like, get off my kid, <laughs> get off. <laughs> I'm the fan that scream at the TV, or if when he do a jump, I'm like, oh man, I told him about them jumps because it's, it's easy to jump, it's hard to land. You know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what if he break his neck? Or that's the only thing I worry about him getting hurt. So for him, he, I think it's the nervousness. Yeah. For me, I'm the angry one, so I get angry. I'm more nervous. <laughs> like, oh, Saquon, he was like, he was having trouble getting getting start. And he was playing everybody else, but he wasn't playing him. He was putting him in the wrong position. He was putting him on the line. Kids, fathers, these coaches, and they put kids in kid, front of kids. And Saquon almost gave up that one time, mm -hmm. but I told him, no, wait your time. He's a talented running back. What, what kind of yards does he have? And the answer I get is... He's a backup to the senior who, who was doing well. Outstanding coaching. Kid's going to be the number one pick of the NFL draft down the road, and you haven't played an outside backer. He said, he said Dad, it's, I don't want to do it no more. And I said, what you want to do no more? He said, football. I said, football? Why are you going to let somebody take you out your space? You know what I'm saying? This is something that you did since you was a kid. You know, and he was like, you know, he was like, one more year. I was like, no, you're going to finish. You know, and that's yeah. when he started telling him, once you quit one thing, you're going to always quit. Once you quit one thing in life that you love, it's going to be easy for you to quit anything else. Your relationships, your kids, you know what I'm saying, your job, anything. And he, he, he took heed to that and he, and he stepped in. I don't think he needed, a he needed to have confidence. I don't think nobody needed to give him confidence is just that I think he just needed somebody to take a chance on him and believe in his believe in him so he can show them what he's capable of doing he just needed that um just opportunity approval no opportunity yeah
because he always knew what he can do. And we always was aware of what he can do. And you can see this kid, and you can see the innate things that he has that no one else has. And then you see how he's getting better, and he's getting more comfortable. And I said, this kid, is he's got it, Andy. He's got it. He don't want to lose anything in life. You know what I'm saying? He got a, he got a real strong will of succeeding. You can't tell him he can't do something. And even though, like, he's competitive, but at the same time, if he lose, that just... Humbles him more. Right. Then thank God for Coach Gilbert, because he gave him the opportunity that he desperately needed. And the guidance and some wisdom to get him where he's at now. Mm -hmm. You know, his senior year was one highlight after another. So he let this particular punt fall uh, to the ground and it rolled to about our own 20 yard line. He ended up picking it up and literally made every person, all 11 guys on the other team miss as he went on for a touchdown. So I, that, that highlight to me sticks out as most, uh, most amazing. He did a couple of those Barry Sanders slash Marshall Falk things that it's rare air. You just don't find people to do that. And he was doing them consistently. And it was week in and week out, it was a highlight reel. And pretty soon you were like, he calls it cartoon characters. And that's the truth. I mean, you, in fact, at one point in the game, I was like, who does this stuff? Who can do this? It doesn't seem real right now to me. It's, um, you know, the stardom that he has from coast to coast. You don't see it from him. You know, when he comes back to visit, when you talk to him on the phone, he, he, he's, he, he is the same Saquon that he was in ninth grade and 12th grade. So it's just fun to watch him continue to develop. And the good news is he's improving. He got bigger. He got faster. He got stronger. He's more elusive. His long speed's better. All of that is great football-wise and all that kind of stuff on the field. Yeah. Great kid, and he, how he's handling all this notoriety he is getting is, is kudos to him. Yeah. I'm most proud, and I think most of the people you talk to him about this will say, I'm most proud of the young man he's become. You know, how he's handled this fame, how he's handled um, the limelight. That's kind of who Saquon is in his heart and in his soul. I would also say that his parents have really done a, a great job of that. You know, his, I, I love his parents. I love, uh, you know, his family, his upbringing. And to be honest with you, they have never made football a thing that defines Saquon or defines their family. I just try to just smile, be nice, be kind, because you never know a, a picture or saying one word someone can change someone's death. Any for the game today? Oh, yeah! I hope we win. I hope, I hope we win, too. <laughs> Coach Franco always tells you, tell us to have a why. Um, they're my why. Uh, my mother, my father, my brother and sisters. Um, I love them to death. Um, without my mother and father, I wouldn't be here on this earth. And without my family, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Uh, so everything I do, I try to credit them and God. Um, and I'm just so thankful. A lot of people aren't fortunate enough to have both of their parents in their life. And I'm, I have both my parents who are happily married and happy together. And I have older brothers and sisters and younger brothers and sisters. And uh, just have moments, memories that we go and cherish for the rest of our life. And I think family plays a big role in your life. And I'm really appreciative for them. You look back, it worked out, worked out good. It's a, it's a good experience. It is. It's not. I mean, you can't say it's what we expected, you know. Expect but, nothing, but we just, for the most part, because we live day by day, so we take it day by day, and everything that happens, we live accordingly, one day at a time.